Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Shisenol Beral Fur, Fang Mountain, the bastion of beasts. Though there seems to be an ever-increasing number of you guys who want the name to be changed to the Bastion of Boulders, because that seems to be the only way we can take care of our threats. That being said, this episode, I am hoping to put our jabberers to the test. Finally, right? We're at episode 5, and more than 10 years have passed in the fortress so far. Kinda crazy when you think about it, especially considering the number of threats that we've faced in those 10 years. Just astounding. Anywho, yes, you may remember that just last episode we sent an envoy out. Down to the south here, to the dark goblin pits of Haunts Black, which is controlled by the Scourge of Meanness, a goblin civilization who we are now at war with. We were at peace with them previously, but not anymore and so I am hoping that they're going to come eventually. They should, anyways. Just got to give them a bit. Also, here's a neat thing. I just realized you can actually zoom out this map. Isn't that wonderful? Makes it kind of hard to see the flashing cursor in the middle. But if you can, you can see our fortress up here in the north, tucked away in the mountain range known as the Beak of Land. And then down here, just to the south, is the Goblin Civilization, about five days travel away. I just thought it'd be neat to see the whole map. Rather, I suppose it's not the entire map. Over here to the east, we have an entire other continent. And some more stuff down to the south, over to the west. Yeah, tar -N is a big, big world. Anyways, time to focus. Now, remember our plan. We have this strange wedge-shaped room here that we currently have all the Jabberers crammed into. Now, I had mentioned last episode that I'm not feeling very positive about this, and I'm still not feeling very positive about it. Remember last episode when that forgotten beast attacked, Zekrum? Well, I think we ended up having four Jabberers go in to fight the thing, and out of those four, three ended up running away or panicking. Only one of them actually fought, which is kind of strange to me, and I don't really know why that would be. I haven't been able to find much good information about it, and some people seem to think that it has something to do with the fact that they are in a pasture. I don't know. That sounds kind of wonky if it is the case, but I suppose it could be as his dwarf fortress after all. And so I want to come up with a different plan for these things. And actually, I do have a couple of different plans. And so another thing I want to try is putting a bunch of ropes here in this hallway. Just kind of like this right here. We have six of them, each one with a war jabberer attached to it. Now these war jabberers will not be able to run away if they're terrified, which seems horribly cruel, but... I mean, if it works, then it will save the lives of all the other Jabberers and our Dwarves. It's an idea. We're testing things out here. I'm not very confident a Jabber is going to fight very well if it's restrained and panicking, but again, we're trying things out. We'll see what happens. And actually, on the subject of restraints, there's something I've been wanting to try here. Now, you can see I've got a War Jabber attached to this rope right here, and I just ordered the rope to be removed from the ground. Now, if this works... Okay, you can see it disappeared right there. And if we have a look at the Jabber, you can see that it's now wearing the rope. Huh, that's pretty cool. Kind of like a collar, right? Purely cosmetic, but it's still pretty darn neat. And in fact, if you have a really cool rope or a chain, perhaps, it'd be a really neat thing to try. You can see that this particular rope is made of giant cave spider silk cloth and menaces with spikes of almondine. And on the item is an image of king snakes in yellow jasper. Also on the item is an image of a forgotten beast in dog bone. That is very cool, I'll have to keep that in mind. Although I am noticing now that this rope has a coating of Zekrum's deadly dust on it, which might not work out well for the Jabberer. Mmm, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this, I think. Best of luck, Jabberer. Let us know if you start developing a rash. Anywho, another thing many people have suggested that might work as a way to help control our Jabberers is to assign them to a soldier which does seem like a pretty darn good idea. That way we can kind of control the movements of the Jabberers too. And I imagine it'd be easier than assigning them to pastures as well. Hmm, hoping. Anyways, <laughs> Now, there are a couple of problems with this though. First of all, we have no warriors in the fortress at all. Not a single one. And so we're going to have to pick a couple of dwarves with some at least slightly decent skills and try to get them trained up a bit. Now, nobody's going to like this. I don't like it. But unfortunately, I think the leader of the Jabberers, the name of our military squad, has to be Tun or Bear Hug. The guy's been around since the very beginning and he knows these Jabberers better than anyone. And so I feel most comfortable putting the Jabberers under his command. And alongside Tun, we also have four other dwarves. And they're all going to be Mark's Dwarves too, armed with crossbows. We're just going to come over here and quickly carve out a small barracks for them, so that they can hopefully get a little bit of practice before the goblins show up. 
that would certainly be for the best. Now I know that because they're dwarves, making them marked dwarves is not going to do very much to prevent them from running into combat swinging their crossbows, but I'm hoping that at least they'll get a couple of shots in before they reach their target anyways. I don't know, it's kind of a bad idea, but mm, hoping it works out. We shall see. Now as for the matter of assigning jabbers to our soldiers, well that's another sticky situation. Originally I was inclined to take a whole bunch of jabbers and assign them all to just one individual, but that would be a big mistake, because after you assign a war animal to a soldier, if I recall correctly, they can't be reassigned to another soldier if that soldier dies, which I could almost guarantee would eventually happen. Huh. So how about 3 jabbers per soldier? That'll make it so that there are 15 war jabbers accompanying our 5 soldiers. That should work out. Okay, so there we go. We have a squad of 5 dwarves, all intermittently training, and each is assigned with a crossbow and 3 war jabbers. Guess we're all set on that front. Exciting. Terrifying. But exciting. And so now, I guess all we have to do is wait a while. I don't think it's going to take too long for those goblins to show up, but who knows. I'm surprised they haven't attacked yet, honestly. But you know, before we go into another wait, uh, I would like to point out a few things. I have noticed that some of the fortress dwarves are getting more and more unhappy, which is bound to happen, I suppose. We're trying our best, but things just don't seem to be working. And one of the dwarves I'm most distraught at seeing unhappy is this guy right here, Tun or bear hug. I don't know why he's unhappy either, but I assume it has something to do with the fact that he's now in a military squad. Right there, you may have noticed it. He went in and complained to the queen. I'm not too sure what's gonna happen with this guy. We might have to rethink putting him in a military squad, but we'll see what happens. Maybe he just needs a break for a while. And aside from that, that jabber with that dusty rope around its neck is doing fine, seemingly. I don't think it's having an effect. Just excellent. And last but not least, something else I'd like to point out is our gremlin cage trap thing down here. Now we've had no success with it so far, and that's because we have not been able to have the caves open. Because at this point, there are quite a few forgotten beasts down there, including this one, made of fire. You may notice all these burned fungi wood trees around it, that's the doing of this beast. And then over this way we have Neck Asic Katang, a pterodactyl composed of microcline. Yeah, that's a bad one right there. This one just has a spittle, not like dust or webs or anything like that, but it's made of microcline, a type of stone, so it would be fairly dangerous to deal with. Yeah, we're not going to be opening up the caves for a while, but who knows. If we are successfully able to repel a siege using our jabberers, we might reconsider the caverns. That would be pretty interesting. Right, and another thing I'd like to point out is our jabberers up this way here. Remember last episode I had said that they filled up all of these nest boxes with eggs, and the eggs are all still in here and they've been in here for quite some time, not hatching. Now, I think I mentioned last episode that I seem to have trouble with that from time to time. Perhaps the eggs aren't fertile. I think I know how to fix that though, and I'm gonna do some testing over this weight here. We're gonna get this sorted out. We need reliable egg production, that's for sure. Anywho, now it is time for us to wait, and hopefully when I get back to you, those goblins will have arrived. We will be right back. Okay, and we are back, and about a year has passed. A little bit more time than I was expecting, but here we are. And you may notice you're not currently seeing the Vile Force of Darkness prompt, as per usual when the goblins arrive, and that's because this time we have a smaller prompt, a much sneakier and far more conniving prompt. We are under attack, but this attack comes in the form of an ambush. Curse all friends of nature. The elves have arrived, the sneaky bastards. And yes, if you have a look right here at our main gate, you can see the elves. Currently there appear to be four of them and a water buffalo, but it's extremely likely that there are more out there still sneaking around. Now I was not expecting to see the elves. Remember before that time jump last episode, which was probably about seven years ago, the elves started having issues with us cutting down the mushroom trees underground, which yes, we've been doing a whole heck of a lot of, but it was right at the beginning of that time jump that we locked up the caverns. And so we haven't touched any of the trees down there, probably in the past seven years or so. So I never thought it would come to this. That being said, now that it has, I do not mind putting down these pointy-eared bastards. Which brings us to our jabberers, who are all in position. Whew, okay. We ready for this, jabberers? This will be a bit easier than taking on the goblins for sure. The elves don't have metal armor or weapons, just wood, which is insanely foolish. Now, first things first, I'm going to turn on a burrow and relegate our dwarves to the fortress grounds only, just so they don't wander out into those elves. And now we're going to take things slowly. Let's watch. Okay, the uh, jabberers are kind of just milling about the area. 
Oh, and here comes that water buffalo. Okay, there we go. Looks like one of the Jabberers grabbed the thing by the head. Oh, and tore some arteries and a tendon in the skull. <laughs> okay, that's good. Continuing now. And looks like the other Jabberers are moving right in. Well, that's good to see. Definitely. Seeing some blood, looks like the water buffalo is unconscious now. Oh, and the Jabberers are just piling on, ripping the thing to shreds. Excellent. Oh, and they killed it. But here come the elves. Tell you what, let's just speed things up a little bit here. Just like that. Okay, I'm seeing dead elves. Um, a couple dead elves. Hold up, was that all of them? Did you beautiful Jabbers just kill all those elves? That is just wonderful. Did not expect it, but I will certainly take it. Having a look up here outside the fortress, it looks like one of our war Jabbers has wandered out here and is now cornered by three water buffaloes. And it looks like the Jabber is not doing very well, although it is enraged, which is good. I think now we'll send out our Jabberers, which is, in retrospect, probably a bad name to call our military squad. A little confusing. <laughs> We're sending out our squad. Following Doran, one of our warriors, who's turning around and going back into the fortress. Now following Asmel, who has left the fortress and is firing bolts. Fantastic. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, although he's a, a little shocked by that sunlight out there. The uh, dwarves don't get to go outside very much. And so between firing bolts, he's now vomiting all over the place. A bit disoriented, but he's hanging in there. And here comes some backup. Fantastic. Three warriors outside now, all shooting bolts. Asmel has moved in and is beating the water buffalo with his crossbow. Wonderful. Although, you will note the distinct lack of jabberers. Each one of these guys is assigned with three jabberers, remember? I don't know where the hell they are, though. Switching over and following Bear Hug now. Yeah, give it to him, Bear Hug. This is going pretty well, actually. Note, too, that this is my very first time using Mark's Dwarves in quite a while. And so that's pretty fun. Although, I'm disturbed by the fact that the Jabbers did not follow the Dwarves out of the fortress. And I don't know why that would be. Is it because we had the burrow on, do you think? Did all the Jabbers just stay in the fortress because of that? If that's the case, then... Well, it's kind of a pain in the ass, to be perfectly frank. If we're under attack, then we're going to want to have a burrow on. Hmm. <laughs> well, in any event, it looks like all the invaders are gone now, successfully dealt with. And I don't think we lost a single dwarf or jabberer, which is remarkable. Maybe some wounds here and there, most of which sustained from those water buffaloes, I'm sure. But yeah, for the most part, I think we're doing pretty darn well. Good job, jabberers, both dwarves and actual jabberers. In fact, now that we're thinking of it, I'm going to rename this squad the Jabbermasters, which is actually an homage to Bear Hug's profession name. Oh, and you will notice that there are only four members of the squad right now. We had to send one away. He was throwing tantrums and beating some of the other dwarves in the fortress. Unfortunately, he took his three Jabberers with him when he left, but you gotta do what you gotta do. We couldn't have a warrior going around beating dwarves. Anyways. Right, well, that was our first successful Jabberer-based defense. Of course, it was only against a small group of elves, which isn't saying that much. But still, I mean, it's better than nothing, really. It was good to see all those Jabberers kind of swarm that water buffalo and rip them to shreds. As well as all those elves, I suppose. Oh, and actually, would you look at that? On the ground right here, we have an elf's head. Nipped off by a Jabberer, I'm sure. <laughs> that is pretty excellent. I mean, if they're doing this well against the elves, then they must be able to do all right against the goblins, I would assume. Small groups of goblins, anyways. Not like full-on 250-plus unit sieges. I don't have much confidence Jabberers would do very well against something like that. But still, good to see him being of some use. Now then, I'm having another look at the map here, because I was pretty certain it was the elves of Adelaide Fee who just attacked us right there. The Wondrous Zephyr is the translated name, and they're the ones who have been trading with us so far. And they're also the ones who issued that warning about the trees, but it is not them who attacked us, which is very strange. No, in fact, you could see they still are at peace with us. That being said, I would expect the elven civilization that attacked us to appear on this list right here, but there's nothing to be seen. And so I want to have a look to see if we could find out who attacked us. That is very strange. Well, the closest civilization is down here to the south, the Twilight of Hegemons. But we've had no contact with them, apparently. And then over here, just to the west of them, we have the Wondrous Zephyr, our trading partners, who we're at peace with still. But down this way here, we have the civilization known as the Barry of Courtesies, who we are at war with. The Rat Bastards, what's their problem? That is pretty interesting. The fact that we have three elven civilizations so close to us, and we've had no contact with one, we're at peace with another, and we're at war with the third. Very interesting. Well, at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident after that last siege. And so something else I would like to try before this episode ends is, 
well, I want to see what would happen if we sent some of our dwarves and jabberers out to attack something. And by something, I mean those elves that just attacked us. And so I want to pick one of their settlements uh, down here to the south. Actually, I noticed a couple that seemed pretty promising, like this one right here the elven forest retreat of Reigned Princess, with a population of about 75 individuals. Although we'll take that with a grain of salt. Um, from what I understand, a Jabber that goes out on a raid should be a very formidable opponent. Now, I don't know the truth behind that, but that's why we test things like this. I am a little nervous because, well, I mean, Bear Hug's gonna be going out with these dwarves, and he is one of my favorites in this fortress, but without risk, there can be no reward. And so let's, uh, let's give it a try. We're going to raid Rained Princess, and I want to openly attack it too. No sneaking around. Oh, and actually, you know what? Let's try to raise the place. That'd be nice. Okay, and we will assign the Jabber Masters. And at this point, we should be good to go. Let's do it, dwarves. We can see the Jabber Masters heading out over the fortress. Just wonderful. Guard your eyes well, my warriors. Don't allow the sun's foul rays to reach them. Oh, we can see the Jabberers here too, dutifully following the soldiers. Very, very good. I will note that at this point, all of our soldiers are pretty well trained with their crossbows. They seem to be gaining skill very quickly, which is excellent. I'll certainly have to be using Mark's Dwarves more often in the future. That was a nice display earlier. All right, we'll just give them a second so they can all work their way out of the fortress. And after they're all off the map, it shouldn't take long for them to get back, I don't think. Unrelated note, do you see all this vomit out here? That's an awful lot of vomit. <laughs> the road is painted green with it. That is absolutely vile. A proper dwarven fortress, but vile nonetheless. Anywho, yes. While the warriors are out on their raid, let's have a look here at the Jabberer pen. And you can see that after that wait before, we now have a bunch of new hatchlings. I had to deconstruct all of those nest boxes before because all the eggs in there were not fertile. I think what happens is that Jabberers lay eggs and those eggs sit in there until they hatch. They hatch and then the Jabberers don't even leave the nest box. They just lay more eggs immediately. And that second round of eggs is never fertile because the female never gets up and kind of mingles out with the males. And so they lay that second batch that never hatches and so they just end up sitting there forever and so what i have to do is deconstruct all of the nest boxes and let the jabberers just kind of mingle with each other for a while and then after an appropriate amount of time has gone by maybe a month or so i go in rebuild all of the nest boxes they're all immediately claimed by jabberers and then i wait three months for them to hatch and after they hatch we have to deconstruct them all again rinse and repeat and that seems to be working. Thing is, is I don't know uh, what the state of this current batch is. Although I think they may be infertile once more. Gonna have to deconstruct them, I guess. Oh well, it's an easy fix. Oh, and there we go. Looks like the Jabber Masters have returned, fantastic. Let's have a look at the report. All right, they head down to Reigned Princess, led by Bear Hug. Oh, and it looks like the uh, elf leader's tactical planning was better than Bear Hug's. That's not great. Why it looks like the dwarves are doing just fine in the combat so far. A whole bunch of humans have died here. Elves too. Although far more humans apparently. Which seems odd. And there we go. The combat wraps up and it looks like we were successful. Even though they did outmatch us with their tactics. And yeah, moving back up here, it looks like the Jabbers did a fine job in that combat. They were the ones doing most of the killing. By a long shot too. I don't think the dwarves killed anybody. Very, very cool. I'll have to keep that in mind for the future. The stronger creatures do much, much better on raids. Noted. Well, phenomenal work, warriors. Still vomiting, I see. <laughs> That's my dwarves. Get back to the fortress, you bearded bastards. Right, well, I was a little nervous about that because, well, those soldiers, I mean, there were only four actual dwarves with middling skill in archery. But just to see the combat carried by those jabberers makes me much more confident in their skills. But just to see how successful those Jabberers were, well, that certainly boosts my confidence. Just really glad none of those dwarves died, actually. Now, we still have some time left here in this episode. Quite a bit of time, actually. And so I think I'm going to cut the chatter for now because I really do want to see how these Jabberers hold up against some goblins. I don't think we're going to see any big goblin sieges here. But if we can at least put them up against some armored opponents, then we might have a better idea of how they would perform. Very interested to see that. So I'm going to let time keep ticking on forward here, and I will get back to you if anything interesting happens. Just one moment. Alright, here we go. A vile force of darkness has arrived. And it has taken its time, let me tell you. About another year has passed since we previously spoke, and in fact I almost gave up on ever seeing any goblins here. So I'm actually really glad they showed up, although this might get a little dicey. 
We can see some goblins just down here to the south, and there only appear to be four of them right now. I do not expect this to be a very large siege at all. But in that downtime there, we actually experienced another ambush by the elves. We were able to successfully repel them once again, but that second ambush was much, much bigger, and we actually did lose a few jabberers, which was a little shocking. And for a while I was kind of nervous because I think we were down to seven war jabberers in our main entryway. But that has changed, and now we have quite a bit more. I think we're up to 62 total war jabberers currently, so we're doing fine on that front. But a third elven ambush has just showed up, and they arrived just before the goblins. Currently they're right here, inside the walls and heading down the road into the fortress. I only see seven right now and no animals, but there could very well be more of them lurking around out there. So we'll have to keep our eyes open once again. All right, Jabberers, we ready? Let's do this. Just gonna start off by watching down here. The elves should be here momentarily, and I've already ordered the Jabbermasters to come up to this end of the hallway right here. So they should be able to see the invaders when they start coming down this hall, hopefully. Another thing I don't really care for is that this time I did not turn on a burrow. Oh, oh, there we go. The elves are down in the hallway and everybody is swarming onto them. <laughs> Fantastic. A whole bunch of the Jabberers do seem to be panicking this time though, which is not excellent. Up here at the surface now, and ooh, yeah, there are quite a few elves, spearmen, bowmen, and swordsmen, and at least one water buffalo as well. We do have some of the Jabberers coming up. That's good to see. I figured they would just stay down that hallway underneath. Looking back down below, uh, most of our war Jabberers are panicking this time. Not great. Yeah, I guess that still is a bit of a problem sometimes, huh? I really wish they could hold it together. It doesn't make much sense that they'd freak out like this. Back down over here, uh, doesn't look like there are many elves coming in anymore, but I imagine the goblins are going to be here very shortly, and we only have a couple of warriors standing in this hallway, and no war jabberers at all. Back up here to the surface, we could still see some elves beating up on our war jabberers, but the jabberers do seem to be holding their own, for the most part. As for the goblins, well, it looks like they ran into some trouble over this way here, and a great many of them are now stuck in cage traps, which might be for the best. Because as we're witnessing currently, uh, the goblins have no problem taking down the war jabberers. This pair right here just killed five war jabberers, no problem at all. And because most of their friends are now caught in cage traps, I believe they're going to be trying to run away now. And yeah, they are. Um, which means this trap here is not going to be very effective. Oh. <laughs> but at least one of the blind cave ogres is doing its thing. Uh, not very well at all. Okay, goblin versus blind cave ogre. Goblin wins, no problem. And all the baby blind cave ogres are just freaking out running around, of course. Well, back down in the fortress, we only have a couple of elves left down here, and they all seem fairly badly damaged. And so I just ordered the Jabbermasters to head out and finish off the stragglers, which they are doing fantastically. Good job, soldiers. And that'll about do it, seemingly. All the other invaders are caught in cages now, except for this one last goblin swordsman. Might as well finish him off, I suppose. All right, there we go, easy enough. Uh, but it looks like one of our dwarves got wounded. Oh yeah, badly too, Jeez. His left hand is broken, his left hand is smashed open, his lower body is cut open, and his stomach is fractured. Oof, just what you hate to see. Well, my noble and legendary dwarves of the bearded bear, I think at this point we can say that <laughs> for sure, it is impossible to guard your fortress with Jabberers alone. I mean, sure, Jabberers are fine at taking out some pitiful elves, or tiny, tiny groups of goblins, and even then you'd sustain heavy losses, but anything more than that? Out of the question, really. Oh, well, I was attempting to wrap up the episode and kind of go over what we learned, but as a perfect example of something we might not be able to handle, the Were Giraffe, Meteris Lucas Inu Bujit, has come. A large giraffe twisted into humanoid form. It is crazed for blood and flesh. Its eyes glow blue and its sepia hair is patchy. Now you will know why you fear the night. Oh boy. And here it is, still outside, coming in through our main gate, where we have a couple of dwarves. Dwarves who I'm sure aren't going to be happy campers in just a few moments. All right, well, let's see how this plays out, I suppose. I've already told the dwarves to go to the meeting hall, but we'll see if they can get there in time. Not gonna even bother taking it slow at this point. Oh, there it goes, just destroyed one dwarf and a second, and is headed into the fortress, where it is going to encounter our Jabberers. And walk past them? Okay, yeah, Jabberers don't seem to care that much. 
That doesn't make any sense. It's gotta have something to do with the burrow, right? I'm turning it off. Still following the raft. And no, uh, we got a couple jabbers going after it. Just a couple though, and most of them don't seem interested. Which is a crying shame. Oh, but here they come. Oh, and they killed it, huh? Okay, alright, well that's good. Definitely. I'm gonna take a quick look at that combat. Right, yeah, it started off pretty bad. The giraffe was beating the hell out of a couple of our jabberers, but then they started getting an upper hand. Or wing. Talon? Beak? Whatever. Yeah, and then they really started laying into that giraffe. Well, that is really good to see, actually. If they can handle a were giraffe, which is an extremely large were beast, then I'm sure they can handle many of the other types of were beasts. And you know, if they can handle a were giraffe, that means they could probably also take on uh, giants and cyclops, ettins, ogres. Mostly unarmored opponents, I'm thinking. You know, it really is kind of crazy how deadly goblins are just because they're wearing armor. Them to breaks. Now then, where were we? Just trying to wrap things up here. Uh, war jabbers. Surprisingly effective. Probably better to be used in tandem with soldiers. Or traps or something like that. But effective nonetheless. Now imagine instead of jabbers if you had some other type of animal. Like giant elephants or something like that. That would truly be devastating. But still, you can't really beat the reproduction rate on these jabberers. Their population replenishes so quickly. And that is an extremely good thing. You may be noticing here, I think the dwarves of the bearded bear are feeling a bit cocky now because they were able to hold off three elf ambushes and a goblin siege and that were giraffe and now they want to reclaim their caverns. And so as one last little test, I just want to see what would happen if we put all the jabberers in this hallway right here and open the gate. I think the forgotten beasts are going to come straight in. If they don't then, well I'm making a mighty fool of myself. Okay, and that's just gonna about do it. it. Looks like all of our jabberers are in place. And the gate is open and the caves are free to traverse once more. Rather, I suppose the dwarves shouldn't be going out there quite yet. Stay in the fortress for now, dwarves. Let the jabberers do their work. Now then, as I was saying, jabberers do seem like a fairly decent way to defend your fortress. A supplementary way, but a decent way nonetheless. I mean, when it comes down to losing a handful of jabberers or one highly skilled dwarf, it would be much better to lose those jabberers, especially considering how fast they reproduce. Mm, checking on the forgotten beasts in the stone pterodactyl up this way does not seem to have any interest. It is kind of neat that once a forgotten beast hangs around for a while, they seem to pick a lair and just remain in that area. I don't know if that's a bug or what. The thing is moving, it's not just stuck in place. It just kind of mills around over here. Oh, and we do actually have this one down here as well. A quadruped composed of flame down in our moat. This is pretty interesting because I've never seen this in play before. But because it's down in the water, it actually burns away the water at such a rapid rate turning it to steam that this moat can no longer fill. At one point it was completely full in here, but after this big bastard went down into the water it burned all of the water away. An interesting little tidbit right there. <sighs> but anyways, looks like those forgotten beasts aren't going to be heading into the fortress. But the dwarves of the bearded bear aren't ones to give up. They've been incredibly successful lately and they're feeling a bit rowdy. But get that Forgotten Beast figured out in no time. But our time here at Fang Mountain has come to a close. And so we really should start wrapping it up. The dwarves have things handled from here. Anywho, my beautiful bearded bastards, our time with the bearded bear has been extremely fun. And I have enjoyed it immensely. And I thank you for joining me as well. It's so fun just testing out new things. And even when you have an initial plan in mind, things never work out the way you think with this game. War jabberers. I certainly wasn't planning on that from the start. But here we are, those trusty, trusty war jabberers. As brave as they are, mighty, they can handle a great number of threats and will be protecting this fortress for many years to come. Probably anyways. Oh man, would you look at that? You know, I was just doing that whole thing there as kind of a jokey little send off for the fortress. You know, like the dwarves got too cocky and decided to fight this terrifying forgotten beast. I didn't think these jabberers would stand a chance, but here we are, they killed it. A forgotten beast made of stone. I mean, again, heavy losses with the Jabberers, but they did it. Okay, hi highly recommended. Jabberers, if you see one in your fortress, grab it. Two thumbs up. Anyways, once more, my bearded bastards, I hope you had as much fun as I had here in Fang Mountain. But our time here has come to an end, and I'm sure the dwarves are in good hands. Tun, Grizzle, you guys are great. Your legends shall grow. And until next time, my bearded bastards.